<laughs> All right, so I have selected this shape around. You see how everything is selected. That's because I said select inverse, so I can cut out this B. Now I want to soften that. So what do I do to soften it? Once I have a selection active. Select and mask. And then I'm going to use my settings. You know, 5 pixels, 2.5 pixels, and I click it to remember. Because that's what I'm going to be using consistently. And then I just hit delete as many times as I think it needs to soften it. And then if I think it needs more, which in this case I do, there's a lot of green. I'm going to actually try something. I'm going to use the magic wand and I'm going to uncheck contiguous. That's because the green is so different than anything interior. I'm going to click on the green. It's going to select those greens everywhere. Even the dark greens. Oh, that's too much. <laughs> And now I'll do select and mask. And now I'll hit delete, 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 delete. Okay. Now I have to get rid of these internal edges, right? So I use my 100%, 0% hardness brush. I can make it a little bit bigger. And I start getting rid of those hard internal edges. I've got a lot of good overlapping content here. I'm just getting rid of that crisp edge. Even though my mask did some of that for me, this way I get to shape it a little bit more to my liking. I really want to get it to where they're overlapping. There we go. Okay, now these three references are all lit completely differently. So I'm going to start with the top one because that's the weird one. And I'm going to go to Levels. I'm going to play with its mid-tone slider. And I'm actually going to push it a little bit brighter. And I'm going to limit its shadows just a tiny bit. Maybe even limit its highlights a little bit. So that shift looks like this, from this to this. So that brightened it up, took, took out some of its saturation, its intensity. Now I go to Color Balance, my favorite one, the magic one. I'm going to push the midtones away from the warms so that it fits more with, within the realm of this creature. Then go to the highlights, put back some of the warms, but not too much. I think that was too much. Then go to the shadows, put in the blues and the greens. There we go. So that the darks here feel like the darks here. Now I go to hue saturation. Play with that hue slider. And I'm just going to push it a little bit to the left. And then maybe take the saturation down a bit. All right next, this guy. Crazy color temperature. But first I go to levels. I'm going to brighten it. Brighten the highlights a little bit, limit them, limit the shadows. There we go. But color balance is where this is really going to matter. Get away from those yellows and pinks. Instead, go towards the cyans and the blues. And you see how that just immediately makes it match in terms of the color dimension. Highlights, same thing. It's not too much. Shadows, put some warmth in the shadows. This is actually called getting white balance. So I'm balancing out the white to match. 
All right, and then my base layer, I'm gonna do after I've blended these. So I'm gonna use the 100% opacity, get that rough edge, and decide where I want things to overlap. Basically creating feathers just by erasing selectively. It's very helpful to have the tablet for this. If you take it too far, you can always go back in your history. Okay. Next. I'm going to take my opacity down blend it away a little differently like that at about a 50% opacity because feathers have some translucence to them. So as they overlap, they're going to get a little bit of that darkness still underneath. Now that I kind of know the shapes I'm going for. Feathers are tricky. Feathers and scales and fur. But the nice thing is they're very textured. So again, don't zoom in more than 200%. But even at 100%, you can see all those layers kind of working together. And now I'm going to go to like a 20% or even lower opacity and just smooth that transition a little. Not going for perfection, but we're going to learn how we can get close, right? Okay, so that's the, the trickiest transition here is this resource to this resource. Now I'm going to go to this background and I'm going to play with its adjustments. Levels first. I want to brighten it up, deepen its shadows, brighten its highlights a little bit. Now I'm going to play with its color balance. I want to give it a little bit more red. That's kind of where everything's going. A little bit more yellow. This is why I wait till the end to do that backing layer. Bring it back in the highlights. There we go. It's about there. And now I can start blending that weirdness of the bee into that background because now the colors are more complementary to each other. Colors in the lighting. I've got a sufficiently weird chest now. It's very unique. Same thing with these transitions. Okay. Nope, don't want that. So all those are kind of layered on top of each other to connect the head. With the edge. Save my work. That's the chest. Lock it. Now the wings. Woohoo. Lots here. So first I want to get rid of 
a lot of this blue space. I'm going to use the magic wand. Hold down shift. Oh, I had contiguous turned off. That's a bad choice because it's going to get inside the wings, you see. So instead, I need to redo that with contiguous turned on. Hold down shift. Get all the blue. Now it's not inside the wings anymore. And then I can hold down shift, switch to my magic or to my lasso, add to the selection. You can always add to a selection by holding down shift. You can always subtract from a selection by holding down option. The legs in there. <coughs> this in there. Okay, now I can hit delete and turn off the layer behind it. And I want to soften this edge. How do I soften it? Select and mask. Say okay. Delete, 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 delete. Bites away at that edge. Yeah, pretty decent cutouts in most places. Little places I might need to use my, my lasso and trim it. Select and mask. Okay. It's so nice to have these powerful computers because that select and mask can take quite a bit of processing time. I can cut around. Find my own shape for these. There is something in the way. Select a mask. Okay. Delete, delete, delete. So we're still just rough placing in a lot of ways. Then I have these wings. I was going to layer them up together. So I'm going to use magic wand now on these. Hold down shift. Contiguous is turned on so it won't get any of the colors inside the wing unless it's too close. So if it's too close, I can change to 16 instead of 32. Just re makes it a little less sensitive. And I can do it in chunks. There we go. And I'm most interested in the edge of my creature. Little debris at the edge. You can always clean out things that are left behind. So even though there's a lot of variation in this background because it's more similar to itself than it is to anything within the, the wings, I should be able to get a pretty good selection just using magic wand. Holding down shift, adding to it, going slowly and meticulously. Okay, now I can hit delete. You can see it cuts it out, but then if I want to soften it a little bit, I go to Select and Mask, say OK. So it's not such a crisp edge. And then hit Delete a few times just to soften it down. It's called feathering, which is appropriate for feathers. I can always just use my lasso, cut into it. Though I like this kind of textured effect. Cut it out like that. I'm just curious how that overlaps. I actually really like the, the contrast and the lighting on these wings. So these might go in the, in the front. <laughs> we'll see. All right, now magic wand, other side, same thing. Lots of selecting. 